Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alchemisted, and this is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt, but this is a special episode. I'm sorry there wasn't a mission this week or last week. Uh, for those of you who don't... Uh, for those of you who only watch Rise of the Red Shirt, I've done LPs for a very long time, and my latest one was of a game some of you may know called Half-Life. Ah! Well, let's just say it didn't go very well. Um, so, I took a week off, sort of dealing with the shell shock, and, I, and I've also been dealing with um, something else that I'm going to elaborate on later. If you have, haven't already seen this, I'm really going to make a vlog this time. I know I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I keep being sidetracked, but this time, I really am. Uh, but, <clears throat> I'll talk about that there. Uh, I've had some difficulties with my account over the past week. Let's just put it that way. But anyways, and they're ongoing, but they're, they're not affecting this video. At least I hope they won't. But, Ryan Dark Shadow, hey. Uh, but, uh, this, the Triple Test Fleet has been kind enough to, uh, al allow me to join them to, uh, give you a brief look at the fleet star bases that are currently on Tribble. And, uh, I, I wanted to sort of take you on a tour. If they've got, if they've got an interior already, that'd be cool. I'd love to walk around the interior, give you some guys some footage of that. I'd also, uh, like to take a look at the exterior. Maybe it'll be under construction. I haven't gone in yet, so I'm going in completely cold. So I'm going in completely cold. We're going to be figuring this out together. Um, and I wanted to uh, give you a look at the user interface and kind of explain a few of the things that are going on in it. So that those of you who are watching, when this hits holodeck, you're not going to be like a deer in the headlights. I got, I, I've, got, I've started my own fleet on holodeck. So, you know, I started, I started my own fleet with a bunch of friends that I play often with. And, uh, so, I don't want to get caught, I don't want to be caught like a deer in the headlights. So, this is, this is important for me, because I want to take a look, because I want to get that shipyard up and running. Because they, because they, I believe, was it in Priority 1, or Podcast UGC, where they were talking to Daniel Stahl? I think it was Priority 1, uh, where they were talking to Daniel Stahl, and he was talking about the, the likelihood that they'll be introducing new ships into the game through the Fleet Starbase system, as well as through the Zen Store. And yeah, they're probably noticing in the upper right, this was a... I haven't logged on to Tribble for a while, this was a nasty surprise to me, is it's now the Zen Store. By Zen. With all the difficulties I've been having after linking my account to Perfect World, I don't know how I feel about that. And those are part of my account problems. That's the cause of my account problems, and I'll talk about those later. But here we are. We are currently... Let me bring up the map. On to more cheerful and interesting stuff. We are currently in Ada Eridani, and this is where this is the location of the uh, of the Federation fleet system right here between the Aldebaran system and the Azhas system. It's not that far away from K7 either. So uh, even if they don't include the ability to transwarp to the Federation fleet system, which they should, but even if they don't include that power, if you have rank 2 diplomacy, rank 1 or rank 2 diplomacy, you can still transwarp to K7 and just fly over from there. It's still a little bit of a hassle, but not as much as it could have been. And uh, the Klingon fleet system is right here next to the Agilon, uh, or next to the Agilon system and north of the Arcanus system, and it's right in front of the transition to the Pycanus sector block. So if you're a Klingon player, that's where you're going to find your fleet. Uh... But yeah, the Federation fleet system is right here, right here. Kind of odd that it's going to be coming attack from all these people. I'm kind of wondering, one of the things they were talking about was uh, the addition of a new sector block. And I'm kind of wondering where that new sector block is going to attach. Because, uh, like, we look at here, and uh, there's nothing... Cassay sector, Zarentine sector, Ada Eridani. There's nothing going on down here in Ada Eridani. But I don't think that I don't think they'd attach it here. Um, like maybe maybe you get through fr from here from the Alpha Centauri sector block, or there's a lot of deep space. There's a lot of, there's a lot of places that go only to deep space, like like all this side from the I I Iota Pavonis, you know, all this side 
goes to deep space. All of this in Cyblorum goes to deep space. Um, all of this in Ada Eridani. This is kind of one of the reasons why I think it might it, they might attach the new sector they've been talking about to Ada Eridani. Because uh, there's all this area here uh, that goes to deep space. Although, if they're talking about... Because they were talking about adding a new sector block. And if it's the Beta Z sector, it might be somewhere near Cardassian space. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. But they're going to be adding a new sector to the game. And I'm wondering where that sector is going to be. Because your Federation base is going to be coming under attack. There are going to be, like, fleet base red alerts every once in a while. Where you have to defend your star base. So, looking forward to that. Uh, I might, I might, I might consider this kind of a prequel or a, an episode zero, if you will, to another series I'm going to be doing, kind of, a, kind of a companion to Rise of the Red Shirt, where I'm going to be chronicling the development of our starbase, and I, we've already named it. It's uh, going to be going to be called Origin Station, uh, because I've already picked, uh, because I've already picked a location. I, I, I've done my homework for the, where the fleet starbase is. I kind of picked a. Uh, a actual location uh, from the Eridanus cluster, and I don't have it. I don't have it open with me right now. But uh, when when that fleet starbase finally hits holodeck, and we finally have the opportunity to build it, I'll go more in depth as to uh, where this station is supposedly located. Um, but anyways. Uh, now that I've, now that I've gone over all of that, let's go ahead and jump in and check out the fleet starbase and uh, see what they've got. Now he said it isn't going to be very fairly large. It isn't a large starbase, but I'm hoping that uh, they will at least have some material. So approach your starbase. It's not my starbase. It's their starbase. They have uh, they have lent it. They have been kind enough to lend the starbase to me. So let's check this out. Let's learn together. So yeah, again, apologies that there wasn't a Rise of the Red Shirt this week or last week, but really, I <laughs> after Half Life, I was just feeling some shell shock. So um, uh, we've actually got a Starbase alert. So let's go check that out. Join Q. I was removed from Federation Fleet Alert. Q for Fleet Alert. I was removed from Federation Fleet Alert. Q for Red. For Federation Fleet Alert. I was removed. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's that's actually nice. I like this, like a like a new little red alert, L cars that uh, attaches to the side of the mini map. That's any streamlining of the user interface is good. I like that. So uh, as part of this fleet now, do I now have a transport power to go there? I'm gonna start. No, I don't. I'm gonna start going through all these little questions that I have in my head. Uh, let's see. No, no transport powers there. You can see Control G. Let's see news, events, view Starbase, triple test fleet. Let's see Starbase Tier One locked. Unlocking the project gives you the following stuff. Contribute. Active project. So fleet marks. Uh, let's see how many. I have that much fleet XP. Let's see, dilithium, dilithium, contribute. I have 10 fleet marks. Uh, let's see, special, let's see, contribute. Uh, advanced multidisciplinary research. So you have multiple disciplines in here. Uh, you have multiple so disciplines of advancement. And, uh, let's see, one of them is reinforced local systems. This is military. Military buff provisioning. Military experience points. So, uh, military gives you stuff like the shipyard, which is going, what, what, which is what we're, our starbase is going to be focusing on first. Because, uh, once it hits holodeck, uh, what, what our fleet starbase is going to be focusing on first because, uh, we have a lot of tactical officers in that fleet. And, uh, although, and, uh, although most of them... Are, prefer escorts. Uh, at least a couple of them want to have some kind of cruiser. What do we got here? Operational assets active. Uh, let's see. 
So I can't contribute to that one. I have 10 fleet marks. So. There we go. I contributed some 10 fleet marks. Go ahead. Let's see. Do they have, have they set a uniform? Enlisted officers fleet leadership. Yeah. So I'm looking. I'm not seeing any transwarp powers holdings. So yeah, it looks like there's still the tier one is still under construction. Okay. So uh, what I just did was I gave one of my duty officers to help with this project. And uh, that's kind of how, that's one of the ways that uh, you contribute. Like, everything is a currency here. Somebody just contributed ten more, maybe? No, they haven't yet. Uh, that's the currency here. Everything, pretty much. Is, uh, uh, is some, will some projects will require bridge officers, some projects will require duty officers. Most of them, probably all of them, will require some kind of dilithium my fleet. Okay, so the fleet, you no longer have to look down. Uh, they've moved the PvP Q button in, down here, which I think is appropriate, considering the PvP is kind of in work in the working right now. They're working on revamping it, so right now, for the moment, it's probably better that it uh, be in the drop-down list. Uh, feel free to send your hate mail to... <laughs> anyways. Feel free to send your hate mail to at handle alchemisted. Um... But yeah, so we got the uh, we got the fleet button right here. We got the PVE queue right here. We got the DOF button right here. So that's cool. So uh, you can you have like five slots to have projects. It looks like, and each one of these projects will upgrade your stuff. Uh, special projects. Uh, special. You have special projects which basically. Uh, accomplish specific goals I've heard like these are the these are the things that get you the the cool stuff but they're not mandatory and uh, then you have like your your general stuff like uh, like military projects and what have you and uh, status so you have like military projects that uh, earn you uh, varying amounts of military of experience and here you can see the shipyard Tier zero, and I'm gonna see enlarge this UI a little bit. Okay. So, for example, uh, once you unlock, once you've gotten 10,000 military fleet XP, more kinds of XP, which I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but uh, because we've already got skill points, bridge officer skill points, all of the commendation experience, and so now we're adding another experience on system on top of that. I'm all for depth, don't get me wrong. I just kind I just kind of feel a little iffy about that. But anyways, um, uh, for example, getting the military tier one will uh, accruing 10,000 military XP from doing starbase projects will unlock military tier one. And that will give you a shipyard one, starbase weapons buff one, uh, tactical duty officer contact, a ship selector, operational assets, and uh, ship variants. I'm unsure what these ship variants are going to be. Now, it was noted in the uh, dev blog that uh, through doing projects, you could unlock stuff like five a limited number of ships for your shipyard like uh, for example five elite defiant escorts I can only imagine that those are ta those are defiance that are leveled to vice admiral and have vice admiral level stats but perhaps they won't include the stuff from the sea store like the cloaking device I don't know I can only imagine though that uh, that's what they're talking about is classified ship variant. Is you'll get like a like a that like that's how you'd unlock your tier five Miranda basically. Is you would unlock the an elite version of lower tier ships that you could use at Vice Admiral. And uh, I have to admit, a tier five Miranda, I've, that appeals to me. I'm unsure what the what the uh, 
what the details are. I know there's got to be some kind of catch when it comes to them. There's got to be... Um, there's got to be some kind of hitch. You know, there's... Um, what am I getting at? Like, like for example, like limited costume options. If you if you know what I mean, like like limited costume options, uh, that sort of deal. Like you like you get that ship, but you only get the costume for that ship, is something that I'm seeing. I don't like like again. This is entirely sup. This is entirely conjecture. I won't know until I see it in action. Until I can go to the shipyard and buy a ship with fleet credits and look. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's get the uh, store, which will be, probably be in the next patch. So the fleet store isn't even in yet. So uh, we can already dock. But before we do, I'm just going to take you on a nice little fly around. And, uh, let's see. And, okay, that's something I wanted to wonder, because I wanted to see if I could get into a shuttlecraft. You cannot visit the bridge from the system. But, uh, just taking a look. Just, uh, taking it in right now. Checking it out. Because you got a cool little framework going on. And that's, uh, one of the things that the, uh, designer was talking about, is they wanted, is they wanted it to look, they wanted you to feel like you were building this thing. So they uh, built it in phases, basically. Like every every single stage of the Starbase has has a construction phase, and it and it looks uh, really rough and half finished. And you know what? If I could have a Starbase that just looked like this, that just looked half finished, I'd be cool with that. But uh, yeah. And uh, actually, it looks if you look at it. If you look at it from sector space, and we'll go back there in a bit and I'll show you, it actually looks a little like like the mid-stage of the Starbase. Actually, it looks a bit like the Guardian colony from Fantasy Star Universe. On one hand, it looks cool. On the other hand, it reminds me of Fantasy Star Universe. So, uh, But uh, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and let's dock. And check out the interior of the uh, Triple Test Fleet Starbase. Now, I, now uh, full disclosure, I've already seen screenshots of the interior, but this will be my first time running around it. So we got a nice little transporter room here. Nothing that can be interacted with. Uh, that's a nice little light in the wall. Okay, so this is my first time running around... Wow, this place is actually a little bit bigger than the screenshots made it look. So, uh, let's look at that map. Where am I? So, let's see, we've got a bartender, we got a counselor. Let's see, we've got a personnel officer, a bridge officer, trainer. Finally, you don't have to go back to Earth Space Dock to train your buffs. No, that's a plus. we got a skill retrainer here. We got a ship tailor, uh, fleet ground supplies, fleet space supplies, ship selection, and a ground tailor. That's that's pretty interesting. I like that. I, I like that the fleet starbase basically has, like, even at tier zero, it has all of... Uh, I like that it has everything, uh, everything you could want from a starbase. Like already, it is everything I could want, with the exception of a bank and the exchange, uh, duty officer management not available. So there will be a connection to the DOF system here. Uh, I can only imagine that you're you're going to be doing banking and exchanging from this room eventually. Um, this looks like an art asset from, and there's that cursor thing happening again. This looks like an art asset from 4028, almost. The rest of these, are, though, are kind of just the generic, uh, consoles. You can find the foundry, so talk to personnel officer. 
Uh, situa I'm sorry, Emma, but the station is still staffing up, and we can't handle any more duty officer requests or transfers at this time. Unlock additional starbase tiers to make duty officer reassignments and recruitment available with your personal personnel officer. So there's a place to uh, recruit uh, duty officers, and I assume she'll also have the mission to turn in duty officers as well. So here you have a bridge officer trainer. Uh, I'm sorry, all our bridge officer training programs are filled to capacity, just staffing the starbase. Once we have some additional facilities, we may be able to bring to uh, have new c curricula. Unlock additional starbase tiers to provide bridge officer training. So while these guys do show up early on, they are not usable until later. Uh, similarly, you can't retrain at tier zero. That's kind of a cock tease. I don't know how I feel about that. Assignment officer. All stations reporting ready and on schedule. I have no special assignments for you at this time, so there will be some kind of special DOF assignment at some point. I don't know. I don't know how I like. Like, I would, I would almost prefer that they weren't there at the start if you can't do anything with them. And later on, you just kind of staff up. Ooh, what do we have here? Uh, bank access unavailable. Unlock additional starbase tiers to activate bank services. Mail slots unavailable. Again, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel that if it's a fleet starbase, that's basic stuff. It probably should have that right off the bat. But yeah, bank and mail services are unavailable. You have a personnel officer, but you can't use them. You have a nice, you have a door to a holo suite here, but I doubt that's going to be usable for some time. Uh, I doubt that they're they're actually doing anything with that. Maybe it's just a placeholder for later. So uh, this looks new, but it actually isn't. This actually looks like a texture sheet uh, because if you've seen the Odyssey Bridge, then you probably saw. All of the, all of, all of the little displays, the little L cars displays, and this actually looks like those L cars displays. This actually looks like the bitmap image <laughs> before all of the images are mapped to the to the geometry for the like the holographic projections of those L cars displays. So, not actually new assets. They look cool, like they look cool here. They look cool in these little hollow projectors, but on the walls, they it kind of breaks the illusion. But uh, on here, they look all right. So, ship selection officer, uh, you can't select your ship. Costume tailor, you can't change your costume. He looks like gimmick to lure from Earth Space Dock. And uh, here you have ooh, whoa, 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 whoa! What are you? What are you? There's a new kind of phaser here. Is that a pulse wave? It look... I'm calling it right now. This looks like a pulse wave. This thing right here. This thing looks like some kind of pulse wave. That's what immediately leaps to my mind with that grip on the underside. That calls to mind, like, this is a Starfleet pulse wave. And if it is, I am so getting it. First, okay, that's the first super awesome thing. Because the the, fe the phaser pulse wave is hideous looking. I've, al I've always hated the way the phaser pulse wave looks. Especially at, vi at VA level. Mark 11 stuff. It looks gross. You know, it, it doesn't look nearly as good as any of the other weapons. Especially, it doesn't look as good as the Klingon Honor Guard pulse wave. Uh, it doesn't look as good as the, any of the other energy types, any of the other pulse wave ener for the any of any other energy type pulse wave. It doesn't look as good as them. It looks hideous. So if this is the new pulse wave, and that's what this screams to me right now with the grip, with the under grip, if that's what that is, sold, sold. I will take it. That just looks cool. That that's that's what that screams to me is pulse wave. Awesome. So none of these work, but uh, fleet ground supplies and fleet space supplies. There will be fleet equipment like fleet uh, like advanced fleet shields and advanced uh, and advanced uh, fleet armor. I would imagine that there will be at some point some kind of set. 
uh, some kind of set involved that requires you to make a fleet. I think that's a safe bet. So let's go ahead and take a look here. The counselor is currently sitting on the floor and phasing through it as well. She is fully booked with all the staff and crew. None of this stuff is usable right now. Currently limited to standard patterns. So, yeah. At tier zero, all of this stuff is locked. So, that... I don't know how I feel about that, because, uh... What's the point, you know, if it's locked? I have to unlock additional tiers to talk to my bartender. This is useless. I don't like, like, the reason, the only re the reason you would want a fleet starbase is so your fleet could go here to do its stuff. So, having, like, having everything not work at the beginning, I don't know how I feel. But anyways, let's see if I can go to any of the other areas. Uh, turbo lift to tactical. We'll start there. So, there are three different areas in this, uh, in this new map. So, let's check them out. This actually is reminding me a bit of Planidia. Let's zoom out of that. Okay, nothing there. Now, they were talking about, like, they wanted to do, like, different kinds of interiors. But they've been saying the same thing about ship interiors for a long time. Now, those of you who uh, have played through the game a lot will probably remember the, the layout of this place immediately. And that is because this is practically the same place that you ran around in in Hide and Seek and in Stop the Signal. It's basically the same place. It's been redressed. But it's the same area. It's got the same general layout. It's got that big balcony. The, this room has basically just been taken from those missions. Uh, messed around with a little. And uh, put here. And I have to admit, it does look kind of cool standing here. It looks a bit a bit better. And you've got a... Uh, what are you? Who are you? Who are you? And what do you do here? Let's see. You've got a personnel officer, who you can't use. Uh, you got a sitable chair, which I'm going to sit in. Yes. But, yeah, it's, ba it's basically the same place from Stop the Signal and Hide and Seek. It's the same, it's the same room that's just been redressed. There's also a modified ready room in here. That is really effing bright. Way brighter than the normal the normal ready room. Although it apparently is facing a rock wall of some sort. Okay, what's this guy said? This guy said a uh he's got a stargazer and a Polaris. Is that a Polaris? trophies on the wall uh, none of the chairs are sitable none of the chairs are sitable at all can I spill his coffee I'm gonna spill his coffee uh, there we go I spilled your coffee I'm a terrible fleet mate uh, uh. I spilled his coffee and I knocked over his whatever the hell that is So yeah, that's the ta that's all, basically all there is to the tactical area. Doesn't look like you can do much from here either. Or at least not right now. Again, this is still in testing, so a lot of this stuff may not be the same once it hits uh, holodeck, but... I've seen... I, I've, so far, I've already seen stuff that I'm really impressed with and stuff that I'm not really impressed with. Like the fact that you can't use anything when you first get your starbase. Like, I understand wanting to make it a long-term goal. They were talking about, like, all of the all the requirements, and... Hang on, I want to see if this actually clips like it does on the ships. 
No, it doesn't clip. On the starships, your uh, turbo lift doors actually clip through the walls. And you can see them through them. But uh, one of the things they were talking about is uh, not wanting to, uh, you know, not wanting the whole instant gratification. They wanted to make this take a while. So let's go ahead and check out science. They wanted to make this take a while. They wanted it to be a long-term goal. And I laud them for that. But I also, you know, not being able to use anything is kind of a pain. But uh, there seems to be a little bit more to check out here. So let's see. So here we just have a sick bay or a medical lab. It's got a nice force field and a bio bed there. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Most of the stuff has been walled off. Is this actually floating? A little bit? Look, almost looks like it is. Nothing import, nothing really to see in here. It's a uh, bio bed. It's got a force field. It's got a bunch of little consoles arranged in a ring. I like this setup. But uh, yeah, medical lab. Hello. Rubber banding. So, let's see, we got the science lab. There's a cross from the medical lab with this thing that, according to Stowicki, produces science. I don't know how it does it. Maybe that's what they're studying. It's basically the same set from your ship. The hell? That, that pad really clashes with those blue L cars. Anyways. It's, it's basically the same setup from your ship. Uh, can't, uh, do any, anything right now, as far as anything is concerned there. So we're going to take a look at the last area of this deck, and that is sickbay, yes. And this is pretty much the same sickbay from your ship. Again, a lot of, like, like, I, like I'm already seeing a lot of recycled environments in here, and... It's cool, but oh, see, tell me, about, tell, me, see, see. tell me about those. Something that works. What the hell? Store. What the hell? Store. What the hell? Store. There we go. Uh, critical injuries. Okay, so I'm guessing there's supposed to be text there telling you that he can't fix your injuries until you've gotten the, uh, until you've hit at least, like, tier one or what have you. Again, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, man. I don't know how I feel about not being able to do anything at your fleet's starbase for a while. Okay, so we're in the engineering deck now. Let's see. Where is it? Where do you go anywhere? There's a whole damn room here that's not on the map. This is, again, this is basically this is the sick bay. This is the this is the sick bay geometry. It's just been reused again. How many times is that so far? The medical bay, like the science, uh, we saw it used three times in the previous area. This makes it four. Yeah, I'm nitpicking. It's what I do. Have you just started watching now? But anyways. Uh, let's see. Here we have another room that's not on the map. That's the turbo lift. Let's go over here and see what we can find. Little control panel. Okay. That's a false door. 
Fuel generator mark 11. Wait a minute. I mean, the fuel generator mark 11 is supposed to give you plus 18 percent, isn't it? It got nerfed again. So here we have. I don't know. Engineering? Probably. Uh, we got this thing here, which is, uh, I'm sure it's impressive. I don't know what it is. We got no, the, uh, no background to speak of. And I assume that's probably because this is yet another copy-pasted room. Uh, this room is actually, although it's been modified, this room is actually from, or at least it looks like it's from, the, uh, captain's table. It looks very close, or at least it looks very close. In fact, I'm certain this is the the basic geometry of this room is from the captain's table. I'm all but certain. And here you have another personnel officer. Hi, how you doing? You can't do crap. Uh, let's see. And we have an engineering repair officer. And, uh, basically the same deal as the doctor. I'm guessing if I click any of these, she's going to tell me, Well, I can't do that. Or she's going to try to. But the text isn't there. Nope. There we go. She's going to try to tell me she can't fix my ship, but, uh, she can't quite do it because the text isn't there. Well, this looks a little strange. What is this? What are you? So yeah, that's the, uh... That's the engineering deck. I don't know how I feel about not being able to use anything. None of these chairs so far have been used. Like only one of the ch only one of the chairs have been usable. Again, that's a, that's a minor thing though. But yeah, so let's head back to ops. Is that what that is? Is that what that is? Is that ops? That is not an ops. This is not ops at all. This is like a lobby. This is not ops. Damn you. But there you go. Quick tour of the in of the interior of the fleet starbase. Maybe maybe this stuff will be usable in a basic capacity once uh, your fleet gets off the ground or one once your fleet starts or what have you. Maybe it'll be different on trouble, but as it is, as it is right now, I can't quite say that I'm awfully impressed because I can't see half the functionality of this place because it doesn't work when you start it. So, like at the at the bare minimum, like have, being able to have a costume tailor and a social instance that isn't flooded with hundreds of fucking players would be nice. I'm still I'm not I'm not trying I'm not trying to be a douche. I, it is it is impressive. I do like it, but. There are things that I do not like as well. There are things that, uh, are, there are little things that I kind of think are a little too heavy, if you know what I mean. Like being able to switch your ship, being able to uh, use a costume tailor, that's basic functionality, man. You know, being able to use a bank in a Starbase, that's basic functionality. Even 39 Sierra has that. And 39 Sierra doesn't even have a costume or a ship tailor in it. So, yeah, I, I just kind of kind of think that it's a, little, it's a little underwhelming that you can't do anything with your big shiny new fleet Starbase when you, do, when you first get it. Even the basic functionality of banking your stuff. Uh, what has impressed me most so far, though, has been this, which I dearly hope is a pulse wave shotgun. The phasers need a better looking shotgun. The phasers desperately need a better looking shotgun. And if that's a pulse wave... Or better yet, if that's part of a new set. If, it, if, if there's a Starfleet set coming that has a pulse wave as, an, as a 
part of its gear. Oh! Oh! I'll take it. I'll take it! As long as it has the shield regeneration ability that the Mako set has, I will take it! And that's not bad to say that, because the Jem'Hadar has the triage subroutine. It has the same thing that uh, the Omega set has, so... So I wouldn't mind another Starfleet set with that shield recharge ability and the pulse wave. Because, I gotta tell you, the, the, Mako, com the Mako battle rifle, it's an okay weapon. But against the Borg, it's it's still not great. Like uh, like I, whenever I go into an SDF, I usually just bring along the uh, the anti-proton rifle, which rips through Borg. It destroys them, and uh, and you and and it has two types of energy damage, which means that even if the Borg get after the primary fire, you can still hit, just rip them to shreds with the secondary fire. And after you're done using that, or after I'm done using that, I switch. That's when I switch to my Mako battle rifle and start picking off everybody who's left with that with that uh, high-powered sniper shot. That's how I use it in ground STFs. I don't use it as my primary because against the Borg, against the enemy it was designed to fight, it's not actually that great. But a uh, but a shotgun, a pulse wave weapon. Oh, pulse waves rip through the Borg, too. So, like a pulse wave weapon, the the anti-proton assault right, the anti-proton distortion rifle, or whatever the hell it's called, and the, uh, and the melee kit, because the Borg can't adapt to kinetic attack. So that melee kit with lunge can destroy them. You know, you you use the shotgun for crowd control to knock them down, and then you start lunging, and then you uh, fall back and you hit them with that secondary fire of the uh, of the uh, anti-proton distortion thingy, and yeah, I used to do that. I used to do that before I got the Mako set. Rips through them. So yeah, I'm hoping, dearly hoping that's going to be a new shotgun. Again, that's what that screams to me. That's what that grip screams to me is, this is a shotgun. And the phasers need a better looking shotgun, so. Okay, I'm done about the shotgun. I'm done about the shotgun. I'm not I'm not going on about the shotgun anymore. I'm kind of interested, I'm kind of wondering why the, um, the Mako phaser battle rifle suddenly has the front of it cut off like this. I don't, I don't think this is intentional. That looks, that, that doesn't scream intentional to me. Uh, so we have this, we have this. Is this a blast assault? Is is this a phaser blast assault? Because this looks like the minigun. So what are you? The phasers could use a better pulse wave and a blast assault. They could use better pistols, too. Because a lot of the phaser pistols just look like your stereotypical guns. You know, they don't really look particularly impressive. So far, that's the thing that I've seen that I love the most, is the idea that there's going to be a better phaser shotgun. Because the phase, the current phaser shotgun, as I said before, is hideous! But, uh, yeah. There you go. That's the star bases and me ranting about phaser shotguns for a long-ass time. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that fleet user interface. So, uh, here we have the overview. You have your fleet holdings which will uh, tell you uh, what tier your various categories are at, what tier your star base is at, how much uh, military, how much XP you have gathered in each category. Um, let's see, you got your general stuff, like who's joined, you can click news, and that'll give you this. Well, that'll take just take you to the news tab. Events, that'll just take you to the events tab. Uh, you got your fleet logo here. It's very nice looking. They've cleaned up the fleet user interface a lot. You got your level here. I'm unsure what fleet level means. I don't quite know what that's supposed to convey. Maybe that just means the tier of your star base. Like fleet level one, fleet level two for you know for whatever tier your star base is at. Maybe. Uh, it also gives you your total fleet XP here. Like all of the all of the XP you've accrued, maybe. Yeah, because it says 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, and here it says 5,000. So fleet XP is the sum of all of the experience 
from the various uh, disciplines of projects you can take uh, accrued into one pile. All right. So go to holdings. And uh, let's see. So I assume there's going to be more than one holding. Like, I assume there's going to be more than one starbase at some point. I'm not sure, but that's what I get. Because it says holdings, plural. So there's going to be... There's going to be something extra going on here at some point. So, active projects. So, uh, again, you, ha you have your active projects. It gives you a little timer. And uh, once everybody has... I'm assuming... So, the way it looks to me is that once everybody has contributed, like, all the required stuff, the project will immediately activate. And then you'll see a progress timer here. And uh, the rewards you get, which are going to be five Starbase Science buff provisioning, which I'm unsure what that does. And uh, 1,000 Starbase Science experience points. And uh, how much do you need to get to Tier 1 of Science? You need up unlocks at 10,000. So these are going to take a while. So this one uh, is going is has 16 hours, 40 minutes left into it. And that will give you 1,000... Starbase science experience. And you need 10,000. They've already got 2,000, so... This... Yeah, this is going to take a while. Do the officers. So... I think something I'm going to do is I'm going to start carrying around a lot of garbage doffs. Just so I don't have to give up my the doffs that I usually use. I may do that. Uh, doff, doff, doffs are going to start picking up on the exchange from what I'm seeing here. Um, a lot of people, like for example, a lot of people are going to... Uh, they want to do provision signs, operational assets. They're going to start buying shield distribution duty officers a lot. So if you sell a lot of DOFs on the exchange, yeah, uh, that's going to help. And bridge officer skill points as well. Br boff skill points actually have a use now, people. I have like 5 million of these, and they've, I've just been sort of sitting there. Um, so now you'll have the ability to actually use these for something, to put these towards something. So I'm looking forward to that. There was also, it was also said that there was going to be a way for you to exchange your boff points for fleet credits. For fleet credits. Maybe this is what they were talking about here. Maybe you just put in your boff skill points here and uh, you just get a, a shit ton of fleet credits once you're done. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, shields, battery, you can probably just buy those off the exchange. Industrial energy cells, you can just replicate those. 300, though. The, uh, yeah, these projects can get steep. Uh, so, here we have at least two types of duty officers required. Research lab duty officers, both of them. Uh, again, use bridge officer skill points. Particle traces, data samples. Now, fleet marks. I'm unsure how fleet marks are earned. Let's see. Uh, fleet marks can be attained through doing fleet starbase defenses, high tier duty officer assignments, and select other missions. Uh, that includes the upcoming no-win scenario that's uh, currently on Tribble right now. You can get fleet marks as a reward for completing the various waves of that. Uh, I'm unsure whether or not you just get your fleet marks at the end of every wave, or you get your fleet marks at the end depending on how many waves you passed. That may be something I'm going to find out. And you've also got, like, data samples, 250, uh, particle traces. And uh, one of the things that I've read on the forums is that you can't, uh, you can't select which you want or how many of which you want. It's just kind of like you tick off this one, this one, this one, and it just takes the amount out. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh... Say so we got a slot open. We got no other projects we can do, though. Now it was. It was also said that you can look in the queue and see whatever projects are available. Let's see. 
personal costume too. So it looks like for every uh, per tailor personnel officer. So okay, let's look. So you unlock your mail at tier one. You unlock the bank at tier two. Ugh. I didn't know how I feel about that either. That Again, that's basic functionality, and you have to spend God knows how many resources to get it. Oh. Locked. Let's see. Starbase Tier 1 unlocks at 1,000 fleet XP. Unlocks at 3,000. Unlocks at 6,000 fleet XP. We've currently got we've currently got 5,000. So uh, unlocks at let's see unlocks at 3,000 fleet XP. So we've currently got 5,000. So it says we have zero fleet XP, but here it says we have 5,000. So that tells me it probably isn't right. That's probably not right. But, uh, the tailor... Ugh, the tailor unlocks at tier 3. Let's see. Bridge officer trainer unlocks. Species-specific personnel officers. Uh, all Starbase 1, 2, and 3 options. Starbase exterior. So for every single tier, you seem... It looks like you unlock a costume option. Counselor, duty officer, skill, respect, duty officer, contact. Ugh. It looks like uh, you can, uh, yeah, it looks like you can change the appearance of your base. I might go with this one. I might go with the one that looks like the Guardian Colony from Universe. I don't think this Fleet XP thing is working right, because it says we got zero Fleet XP here. It says we got 5,000 Fleet XP here. So by that logic, we should all this fleet should have already unlocked the tier two. I don't know. Let's see leaderboard. Hey, I'm on the leaderboard. Wow, Teresa has contributed a lot. So it looks like uh, the amount of fleet credit you earn determines your place on this leaderboard. Fleet credit is also the currency you'll use to buy the various stuff in the uh, fleet stores, like the the, um, the fleet space equipment, fleet ground equipment, what have you. And what, and what, let's see, uh, let's see. And all of those, okay, I'm not seeing fleet stores up on the Starbase here, so they're probably down here. So for example, uh, operational asset military one ship variant let's see all military one options shipyard two mark 12 ground weapons hmm. for tier two uh, shipyard and then you have tons of ship variants appearing in that shipyard let's see uh, duty officer contact security duty officer contact so that probably means you can turn over contraband on your star base it's kind of late to get it at tier 3, but what have you. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Shipyard 4. Mark 12 ground fleet weapons. Mark 12 space fleet weapons. So I should probably explain what operational assets are. Uh, operational assets are were described in the dev blog as one-time use stuff. Like, uh, summon a, a squadron of defiance, for example, for use when your station is under attack. And some of them are permanent as well. Uh, there, are, there were a couple ones described that were permanent. I don't remember them. Or at least I don't think he went into too much detail about what those were. But I would imagine, like, maybe there's an odyssey or something. Again, pure conjecture. Pure speculation. But, like, an odyssey or some other heavy hitter ship, NPC ship permanently stationed around your starbase for during those red alerts or um uh your starbase now has a hangar bay to launch peregrine fighters to defend itself i don't know something along those lines i think it would be what those permanent operational assets would be uh let's see 
Engineering, you get the uh, Industrial Fabricator, Star Release Hull and Region buff one. So a lot, of, a lot of the getting a lot of the stuff in these various military engineering and science tiers will also buff your star base for when it comes under attack. So while, so yeah, there's also that added benefit to, to doing as many of these as you can. Although again, my fleet is probably going to concentrate on military first since the bulk of it is made up of tactical officers, uh, including myself. So that's something we can probably contribute to a lot. Uh, let's see, Starbase Hall and Region buff. Mark 12 ground armor, starship repair, major, starship repair, minor. So doing engineering will unlock that engine, rep starship repair at that engineer. Let's see, our engineering two, engineering three, starship repair critical, mark 12 engines. Uh, let's see, hull and region buff. So yeah, doing, uh, basically, and these look like little stations that are going to be popping up. Because I, I do remember from the screenshots that there are little things that are going to be popping up around your starbase. So, hopefully, these are actual stations that you'll that you will be able to see the progress the moment you start even approaching your starbase. Once you enter the starbase system, once you approach it, you'll be able to check out at a glance what the status of your starbase is. I like that. See, so, uh, Transwarp Conduit 5. What? Transwarp Conduit 1. So, getting Science 1, Transwarp Conduit 1, getting Science 1, that must unlock Transwarping to your Starbase. Because it says Transwarp Conduit 1, that's that's what that shouts to me, so. Communications Array 1, Starbase Shield buff, Science, Sick Bay, Minor. So, this also unlocks the, the same... Si the same stuff that engineering unlocks, but in sickbay, in terms of uh, your sickbay treating you. But again, that's something that all star bases have, with the exception of 39. 39 is kind of the odd man out in a lot of ways, uh, in terms of star base functionality. Okay, I'm excited again. I, having looked through all these buffs, I'm excited again, but I'm still kind of put off by the fact that you can't do anything in your star base until later on. Here I have this shiny star base that I can't do anything with. It's just there, and I want to, I want to have fun with it. Nah. But anyways, uh, it looks like this fleet isn't really concentrating too hard on military XP. Again, that's gonna be that's gonna be one of the focuses of that's gonna be one of the focuses of my fleet. Is the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get that shipyard up. Um, we're gonna bring that shipyard up and running uh, because. Well, because just because, because I want I want that shipyard for for all of us for when they start introducing the new the new ships. Uh, I can only imagine though that you'll have to have your shipyard at a certain tier in order to obtain the new ship, but uh, we shall see. But I, I'm really I'm really hoping that these are actually like act, going to be actual facilities that will be outlying around your starbase. That'd be really cool. I'd love that. Like, like you have like this entire space complex of bases that are all supporting each other. And, and like, that's like some Star Trek Armada shit. Almost, in a way. I like that. I'm warming. I'm warming up to the tier progression. I just don't like the fact that you can't do anything. But, um, yeah, that's a, that's a quick look at the uh, Starbase system that's currently on Tribble. And, uh, yeah. I've been going on about this for an hour now, and I think I'm going to leave off now. I think I'm going to take my leave. I'm going to thank this fleet right now. Got lots of footage. And done. Got lots of footage. Thanks for having me. Let's see, dropped a. Let's see. Let's see. Drop some freight marks and a doff. 
one of your projects. Sorry, you couldn't help more. Eric's and a doff on one of your projects. Sorry, I couldn't help more. Let's see. I misspelled that. Sorry, I couldn't help more. Uh, could you send me a link to the finished video? So let's let's see. Uh, let me write down his. Uh, let me jot down his at handle so I can send him a link. So again, uh, this guy wants to watch this video. So uh, yeah, when you watch this video, I'm sorry. No. I just kind of call it how I see it. This is a really cool place. I'm really warming up. I, I'm really excited for the Starbase system. I just don't like the fact that you can't do anything at the beginning. I don't. I don't like that they did that. They built it that way. But I do like the progression system. It looks like something straight out of Star Trek Armada, with the various bases that are going to be outlying your Starbase. And uh, as someone who played the shit out of Star Trek Armada back in the day, that really excites me. So let me write down your ad handle here. Uh, I'm not going to say it out loud. Let's see. I don't know if he wants me to say his at handle out loud, so I will restrain myself from doing so. But I will send you a link to the finished video. Let's see. There we go. Okay, jotted down your ad handle. See you later. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and evac this place. And return to sector space. And uh, I'll sign off from there. And I'll get editing this and get this uploaded. Because, damn it, I want to have something up. And I didn't want... I wanted to have something up on Sunday. But, uh, let's... Let's get away from the pointy thing. I wanted to have something jotted down on Sunday. Not jotted down. Wake up, man! I wanted to have something done on Sunday, but all this account pro all these account problems have been really interfering with uh, what I want to do for Taurus. I want to do so. I want to do a couple of really big things for Taurus that I haven't really done before in videos, or at least in Star Trek Online videos. I've done what I want to do once before and only once before, but uh, it's made really difficult by the account problems, and it was already going to be difficult. So that certainly doesn't help. So it's going to be taking a long time for me to get it done. Uh, so uh, if you haven't seen the vlog yet, uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to probably do some foundry missions as filler while I work on all the things I need to get to done for Taurus. Uh, and yeah, and I'm going to take a... I promised I'd show you around... The, uh, this Starbase, the way it is right now, uh, really kind of reminds me of, uh, may maybe it's the later stage, but one of the, one of the phases, and this looks like the phase that I was thinking of, with the, with the, with that outer, big outer ring, but it really reminds me of the Guardian Colony from Fantasy Star Universe. Now, admittedly, the Guardian Colony was very cool looking, but Fantasy Star Universe was a piece of shit, so... It was! It was! Fantasy Star Universe was a piece of shit. And I, I'm, I subscribed to it! I'm talking... I played Ambition of the Illuminous. I, 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 I'm saying this as a fan of Fantasy Star. So send your hate mail to Ad Alchemisted. <laughs> I'm not making many friends today. But anyways. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of like going off the cuff and calling things how I see them, looking around the star bases for the first time, I am legitimately excited about the progression and the star bases. Like, ha like being able to have a bunch of outlying little bases around yours at, and, and having to defend them from attack. That is straight up fucking Star Trek Armada. And that's already in a game that is straight up Star Trek Starfleet Command. And those are two of the best Star Trek games, Star Trek games out there. If you ever get the chance... If you ever get a hold of Starfleet Command 1 or 3 
and uh, and Star Trek Armada. My God, get those because those are fantastic. Not Armada Two, not so much, but Armada One is really good. Um, Starfleet Command Two is really good as well, but that's mostly that. Starfleet Command 2 is mostly really good if you like modding, because Starfleet Command 2 is very easily moddable. And, uh, particularly if you get Orion Pirates. In fact, if you're gonna get Starfleet Command 2, don't get Starfleet Command... Don't get Empire at War. Get Orion Pirates. Um, because... Orion Pirates is where all... Is, the, is basically the complete version of Starfleet Command 2. And, um... You can there's a, you can download the uh, I believe you can download all the Starfleet Command Two missions and install them to Orion Pirates from Battle Clinic, anyways. Or at least I remember doing that back in the day. You can download all the Federation campaigns from Starfleet Command Two Empires at War and use them in Orion Pirates. It'll just be harder because Orion Pirates gets bug fuck insane with the ship configurations. You know, once you start seeing X ships, that's pretty much it. Unless you're really good at the game, you're gonna get the crap kicked out of you. But um, yeah, it's it's it, like it, that combination of Starfleet Command and Star Trek Armada. I find that deeply awesome. And my God, we are tripping Odysseys right now. Look at this, Odysseys and Armitages and multi-vector escorts. Oh my! No, it's an advanced escort. It probably has the console in it though. It's triple. It probably has. We are tripping Odysseys. Look at this. There's so many Odysseys. This what? This poor fellow can't even find a place to park. Oh, there's a pin button here. Huh. That'll never get used. You're a multi-vector, aren't you? Aren't you? No, you're a deep space science escort. Oh my God. Oh my god! <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What is that? Uh, this is a gnarly looking alien. So, um... Look at this! There are just... We don't want there to be co Odysseys everywhere. We think there's just the right amount of Odysseys in the game. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Look at that. How many of these are star cruisers? Let's see. Uh, let's see, we got Odyssey Operations Cruiser. Let's see, Odyssey Science Cruiser. And my game is lagged. Hey, 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 game. There we go. Let's see, Odyssey, that was an already Odyssey Science Cruiser. Odyssey Tactical Cruiser. Okay. The volume of Odysseys is lagging the game. The game cannot cope with this many Odysseys at once. It can't do it. Oh, he disappeared. So what are you... There's more Odysseys! It's like a watering hole for them. Odyssey Science Cruiser. Oh. Odyssey Tactical Cruiser. <sighs> My god! Too many! Too many! <laughs> Anyways. Buy yourself... Buy a sandwich instead! Take yourself to Red Lobster! Fly something else! Variety, people! It's the spice of life! But anyways, thank you to the Triple Test Fleet so much for, um... for allowing me to poke around your uh your star base and stick my nose where it doesn't belong and uh thank you so much uh for giving me a chance to acclimate myself and give people watching this video a guided tour um i hope i didn't complain too much i've said that before but i'll say it again that's just i'm not really complaining i'm just kind of calling it as i see it you know it's not that i'm not excited i am but that's just kind of what I do here, so... I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, address your hate mail to that alchemist. And alright, that's enough. I've, go I've been going on for an hour and ten minutes. It's time to call this one. So, this is Alchemisted. This has been Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. Kind of. 
and uh, I will see you guys later. So, later.